think I'm good. I think I'm up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream for the, yeah, the stream for today. There we go. One sentence in already. You have to you know, correct the blunder. My name is Bino, uh, and today is the 19th of July 2021. We're getting to that point in the year where in Australia it starts getting a bit brighter in the evenings and a bit brighter in the mornings. Um, well, it's been happening for a while, but it's at that point where it's like you start really noticing it. Um, so, actually, what are the sunset times right now? This seems like a very random tangent to start off, but I always find, like, the passage of time, uh to be fun to keep track of. So today, the, uh, I don't know, then timeanddate.com, uh, so 6.56 a.m. to 5.06 p.m. Once it starts getting dark past 5 p.m., I'm like, oh, cool, because I hate those work days where it's like, it's just dark well before you, you finish work. Um, so, it's gonna keep getting later by maybe 40 or 50 seconds a day. That's cool. Uh, Keep going, you know, all, all August, we'll get to 5.30 pretty soon. That's always a good stuff. Uh, I got a couple of topics for today, uh, nothing too much, but I will say one thing uh, to start off is that I have been getting uh, very um, copious amounts of sleep recently. Copious? A lot. A lot of sleep. Um, so I've been sleeping earlier, waking up at... There's been a couple of sleep-ins, but generally nothing really too weird. Uh, but I've, I've felt like I haven't been keeping to a good sleep schedule. I've been sleeping too late. I've been going to bed at like, you know, 11.15, and then I wake up at like 6.15, and it's like, yeah, it's time to get on me. I know there's some people out there. By the way, I love how this guy's like, hey, have this Pokemon. My pal's a stubby guy who snoozes all the way, but you can't carry another Pokemon. I actually kind of want to pick this up, just, like, see how it's going. This is a bit of a weird encounter, this one Pokemon, um, because I've got- Oh, I've got a throwaway in my inventory already, don't I? Yeah, I've got Eggbert, I don't- I'm sorry, Eggbert, but I- no. Uh... I've got this Oddish here for, like, Flash and maybe Headbutt. I forgot who I'm teaching Headbutt to, I gotta figure it out at some point. Um... But yeah, no, this is a bit of a weird one, because the guy doesn't necessarily, like... You know, this is not supposed to be a permanent party member. But you are holding on to him. I don't know, you can use him. All you gotta do is deliver this mail. With a whole Pokémon. I don't know why he doesn't just give you the mail. I just realized I've still got, a uh, Retroarch stuff on, so, uh... <laughs> give me, like, one brief moment where I go, uh... Tricking settings, uh, on screen display, <laughs> get rid of the notifications. Uh, game will come back in a moment. There you go. <laughs> Forgot to do that before the stream. Uh, so, yeah, so he gives you Kenya. Kenya is a sparrow. Level 10, not particularly high level, um, but technically, you do get to use the Sparrow for a bit, if you feel like it. It's cool, I like it. Uh, other than that, it's a route, there's more. Are you going to the gym? Me too. Uh, yeah, I feel like they actually expect me to have gone up here. Because, yeah, these people are not as strong as that mill tank. Here we go, we start off with Vulpix. Let's try and go for two evolutions this episode. Uh, that's going to involve Babat reaching level 22. Um... We'll see how that goes, but should be okay. Uh, what was the other one I wanted? Someone needed to hit level 20. Wooper. Wooper's definitely going to hit level 20 this episode. That'd be cool. Uh, are we just going to flinch spam as well? Not quite. And this is not the nicest attack if I get burned, but I'm faster and I should be able to sweep them. No sweep for me. Oh my gosh, jeez. No, 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 no. No, don't, don't you dare. So yeah, uh... But no, yeah, uh, because of that, I... Um... 
I feel like I will tend this part more towards, like, me ending, uh, sometime after 10 rather than leaning up to 10.30, which I've done sometimes. Um, I just kind of want to, uh, see how I go, maintain a bit of a sleep schedule, uh, fair enough. That's my fault for, for streaming a bit late, I guess, uh, you know, for my kind of schedule. Maybe I should do some morning streams at some point during the week, who knows. I'm gonna show my girlfriend I'm hot stuff. Sure. Cool. <laughs> what kind of hot stuff? Everyone loves a Sandshrew. Sandshrew is actually kind of cool. Sandshrew is a very inoffensive first-gen Pokemon. No one will really hate you for using Sandshrew. Uh... So on the topic of hate, I might as well uh, mention- Oh my gosh, I just realized I'm being raided with a party of two. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Gelatart for the raid. Uh, the two-person raid, I know, I'm in that camp where I get two people counts as a raid, but it counts. Um... Knock him out, there you go, you're all good. Away you go, so... Yeah, on the topic of, um... Uh... Hate? Uh, I guess? Not hate, but, uh... I think hate's a bit of a harsh word for this, but definitely, um... Controversial topic, so let me talk about the, uh... The Formula One for a moment. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched the race, uh... This is purely gonna be... A... Lap one and... Uh... No, actually, no, it is gonna spoil the race. Hello from Rusty's fam- Ooh, Rusty's. How's Rusty's doing this time of year? I don't think I could spam bite this very often. <laughs> Maybe I should- yeah, I should switch out. Lurking while I get ready for work? Hey! You know, a, 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 catching a stream before work is always great. Gets you into the- the, um... I guess the social mood. I- I find that, like, you know, I like getting myself really energetic before I go to work. Um, if there's one thing I've actually noticed since, like, work from home stuff has kicked in, um, is that I feel much more active doing something very, like, casual for myself before getting into work. Um, like, not, like, during work hours, but it's like, oh, you know, work starts at 9, I'm gonna play a game for a bit, and I found that, like, I feel really motivated at, like, 9 o'clock the moment I'm, like, done with the game. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's dive into it. Whereas, like, you know, back when you commuted all the time, like, I'd catch a train, I'd be listening to music, and then i get to the station, I'm like, oh, now i got to walk for, like, 15 minutes, and then it's like, now I'm at work. Whew, how's everyone doing? Like, a bit tired. So, definitely finding something you like and, and chilling on it, and, man, I don't have a particularly great bet against this uh, Pikachu, apart from just using Tackle, which, I don't know, I don't even have the attack to back it up as much now. I feel like maybe just stick with Chicky. I know Chicky's getting a bit more, more levels right now, but that's okay. Quick attack, not the nicest, but, you know, I can live with it. Uh, so yeah, on this route, uh, for anyone who is playing along and just wants to know, uh, you can find Nidoran female and Nidoran male uh, at 30% chance each in the grass. There's also a 20% chance for a Drowsy, 10% chance for an Abra, and then a 5% chance of a Pidgey uh, in the middle of the day. Hoot Hoot is 5% if it's not the day, which for me it is. As well as a 4% chance for Ditto, and a 1% chance for Yanma. Uh, Yanma is actually a kind of interesting one, I feel, um, because Yanma... Uh, does not evolve in this game. So note that as well. There's a Yan Mega in Gen 4, but not yet. I feel like Yanma is okay. The lack of evolution kind of hurts, but... And also the, the special typing. It feels a bit odd. It's fast, for a bit. Might be, might be caught out a bit later on. I don't think he's particularly amazing, but he's not, he's not too bad. 1% though, that's a really like just rare find, isn't it? Diglett! Everyone loves a Diglett. Especially when he's level 10. Oh, 
Well, easy source for the Babat, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, F1 race. Um, I'm, I'm personally a bit salty, uh, as a, as a McLaren fan. I didn't mind the result that the McLaren drivers got, you know. That's a, that's a good spot for them, and boosts them up really well, and good on, good on my boy Danny Rick for doing as well as he did. Uh, as a, uh, I don't want to see Mercedes absolutely sweep again, uh, guy, holy crap, like, jeez, I'm not gonna be as, uh, harsh, uh, as I see some people on the internet calling, uh, Lewis, like, he almost murdered someone, it's like, oh, murder is a harsh, shrieking, like, way to phrase it. Um, well, we'll say kill, like, jeez, that's a, that's a solid crash, if you guys haven't seen it, um, just, like, Google, you know, Max Verstappen crashes, uh, and if you're watching this way later down the line, uh, this is particularly the, the British Grand Prix of 2021, so you can put that in. If you put it into YouTube now, it knows that it's trending, it's gonna boost that up, you'll find the crash. Real gnarly, like, like, boom, crash. Like, freaking, he, he gets, he gets, uh, pit maneuvered, his tire comes off, and he, like, he's just kind of skidding sideways across the gravel, not too, you know, gruesome, and then it's like, there's no traction to hit the gra uh, hit the wall, and so he's hitting that wall like, 300 k's an hour. Absolutely boom. If you hear the, um, the radio comms, it's like, it's freaking like, bro sounds kind of dead. Not like, you know, I, he, he sounds incredibly winded, and I think he, you know, Max is definitely going to recover, but like, holy crap, man, like that just, like that's just, you know, scary. That, that's terrifying to like, be put in that position. So, to that, everyone likes pointing the blame game, and instead of just going, you know, heat of the moment racing incident, which I'm okay with people calling it that, uh, I do think Lewis is more in the wrong because, like, yeah, they both kind of turned into each other, but also Lewis was the one, like, really aggressing on the line. Behold, my graceful ball dexterity, I forgot this guy exists. Oh, someone at Nintendo had a fun time translating everything here, by the way. Oh, I just realized this is not the guy who you send freaking anyone against. Jeez. Jeez, my... Like, I've got one flying type, one water type, and one guy who's relying too hard on electric attacks, and I've got the one guy who can soak it all up. Able to freaking tank it right here. I don't... I guess I accidentally just hit tackle, but then I don't realize it's level 2. I'm gonna get like two experience. Well, there's a two in there somewhere. So definitely a bit of an oof. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think Lewis is in uh, a bit more of the wrong because he dives straight in, and I understand like oh racing incident, but also like like he went right in into a corner that you typically take flat out. I don't know what you're trying to accomplish here because you can't just take the corner faster than your opponent if you're both like full throttle like going into it it just seems like i mean you know when people say it's risky it's like dude that is legitimately risky like if you if you're going into a breaking corner and you just kind of like knock someone out like sure but like this is as as some people say it's one of the fastest corners on the on the calendar i i am generally like you shouldn't, you shouldn't push into that corner. You should not push into it. You should just let off for a bit. Get a bit of a better, you know, angle around the corner. And then try and go through the, the you know, maggots and becks. Becks? Beckett? I think it's Beckett, actually. When you go through those swervy corners, that's where you gotta do your overtake. And at the very least, just like, stay close. And just wait until DRS laps if you really, really want to push ahead like that. I, it just seemed needless, so, um, the other thing as well is that, uh, I think Lewis came off as very disingenuous after kind of not really apologizing for it afterwards, like, I, I, it makes sense that he didn't know that Max was, like, legitimately, you know, injured from that, because it's not like he saw 
the impact, and it's not like you'd really, you know, tell them during the race. So fair enough on that, but, uh... But he came off as a bit disingenuous when he said, like, oh, it was, you know, it was a hard race, despite knowing that his, like, key competitor, uh, you know, he knocked him out of the race. Also, what's with Magma using smog? Like, it makes sense as an attack for, you know, a very smoky, billowy Pokémon, but this is a poison-type attack. It just poisoned me. It's a strange attack. That's a bit of an odd one. Uh... But yeah, yeah, no, he's knocked out his main competitor. His main competitor's teammate started the grid at last place, and so he knows he's not gonna come up at all. Uh, the other person, Lando Norris, who usually comes up, had a bad pit stop, and I feel like he kind of... I'm pretty sure he was aware that he was nowhere near. Um, so I'll go with that. And then the only person in front of him, Charles Leclerc, who got kind of lucky and overtook during that corner, um, and then just kind of stayed ahead. He had engine issues the whole time, and they, they knew it, and yet... And, and, and then the only other person that he'd be particularly racing is Bodass, who was told to get out of the way, because... Because Lewis is obviously the fastest driver, sure. And then Lewis comes at the end and says, like, oh, it's a hard race, and I'm like... What? Like, yeah, you were catching up to, you know, Leclerc, sure, but... You know, it, it was never in doubt that he was gonna get at least second. It, it seemed like such a breeze for him. And just him, like, coming out and going, like, oh, you know... I don't know, it, it rubs me off the wrong way, um, and so I hope that the, uh, is he gonna die? Dang it. Uh, I hope that, um, in, in the future, I hope that Lewis does not come off, uh, as disingenuous as he did in that time, and I really hope that the commentators would kind of glance over it, because, uh, I, I mean, yeah, like, you don't really want to be critical of a of a driver too hard because, you know, everyone's watching your broadcasts and you don't want to just rail on them, but... Yeah, it, it... It leaves a bit of a bad taste whenever, like, someone... Um... I guess intentionally goes in for a bit of a dangerous move. I think you should have known that. Uh, also, this guy... Wow, you're pretty tough. Can I get your phone number? I'll call you for a rematch. You got another, another person to call. That's always good fun. I'm gonna go for a heal because I need no arms back. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not nice at all to see someone get injured like that. Like, and, and this, I think, I can't remember really, like, the, the last time I think that kind of happened was, um, uh, Russell and Bodass in Imola earlier this year. Um, which that's kind of crazy. We're already like ten races in the uh, in the calendar already down. Like that's nearly halfway. Um, but yeah, yeah, Russell and Bottas and and all just kind of you know doing that collection and definitely hitting the wall pretty hard. And this guy also fights you as well. Danger. Nighttime only. So just remember, the officers are kind to you in the day, and then they decide to beat you up. Beat up the kids at night, so... Uh... And then, yeah, I can't think of, like, particularly the last time when, like, you could really point to... ...a bad racing incident like that. Um... I'm thinking of Grosjean. Like, Crash. Uh... But, that was, uh... That, that did seem a bit more accidental, and also, like... ...freak accident, like, that... That fire should not have happened. And Kenya is getting some experience, apparently. Cool. I keep forgetting that <laughs> that ordering does not change on that screen. No one boy's really getting his butt kicked recently, isn't he? He swept that one cave, and now it's just like... He's growless. He's still super effective against them. I think he's longing out for that evolution in three levels. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for F1. I've, I've got no other things to say on it, but yeah, if you guys have opinions on stuff, just tell me and tell me how wrong I am and how much Lewis is way better. And I will, uh, listen, at least, we'll say that. Uh, I, 
This has definitely been a, a an interesting one because, like, this is the first time I guess I've experienced the very like sided sportiness of of F1. I got into it like very early last year, um, and like it seemed like oh everyone gets along, you know, like traveling circus. Like yeah, you kind of want some people to to win or not win, but you know, like oh we all just don't want to see. You know, Lewis dominate all the time. We start seeing one guy, you know, Max start to dominate. We're like, yeah, let's let's figure out how to get some closer fights. But then, yeah, you see this, and you're like, oh, that eh, definitely rubs me the wrong way on that one. Um, and I think they're gonna have to figure out something uh, to not let that, not let this happen again. So we'll go with that. Uh. I got another small quick topic, it's the recurring uh, theme four weeks in a row of the copyright strike. Uh, as of Friday, uh, that strike got removed because it had been two weeks since I filed the counter notification, which was uh, subject to perjury if I, uh, if I was apparently misleading people, which I wasn't. We'll go with that. Oh! Gina, I'm talking about copyright here. Do you want to battle? I'm gonna win this time. I'll be waiting for you around Route 34. Which one's 34 again? What? That's just there, bro. Well, okay. Uh, let me just I'll check me notes. Yeah, okay. I guess I could maybe go for a rematch. Uh... Oh yeah, Gina is 100% going to kick my butt. Let's do it. I'm going to save as well because I don't trust this, but... Uh, Bulbapedia really should change the description of this though, because they say this is after uh, Mahogany Town, which is... Much, much later. Um, like, I've, I've gone nowhere there. It's kind of interesting that, yeah, we've got the rematch, like, right away. Okay, so, point is, if someone wants a rematch, you, you gotta, one, know who they are and where they are as well. Nothing in the game tells you that Picnic and Gina is back on Route 34. Actually, maybe they did. Maybe they, they did say it. Sorry, my bad. Wait, this is not even the same freaking... This is just a literal rematch. They didn't change their team. Okay. They've disappointed me. I thought I was gonna have to fight their better team, and I was like, ooh, that's gonna be interesting. So now I'm fighting hop at no splash. Still though, this is, I guess, kind of interesting, because the first game didn't have any way to, like, refight trainers and gain more money. Legitimately, the best way to earn money in the first game, when you were, like, at the end, is to spend it on the things you need. Go in for the Elite Four. If you fail, then just, like, you're hopefully have made more money off the trainers. Like, say, say it's like, oh, I've got a hundred bucks, I beat, like, two of the Elite Four, I've now got five thousand bucks, I die, I lose half of that, but now I've got twenty-five hundred that I can use to buy another, you know, thing. And you just kind of have to, like, throw yourself at the Elite Four to do this. At the very least, this game, you can refight these trainers. You've also got the Elite Four, but you can at least refight these isolated trainers and gain some more money like that. Um, Third gen took it onwards a bit more with the Versus Seeker, which I actually think is one of the best ways of going about rematching people. Um, apart from you're not able to, uh, you know, p trainers don't get better, unlike this game where most of the trainers, if not all of them, actually get better teams later on, um, you know, once they start rematching you later in the game. Um, Uh, things are going pretty well, I'd, I'd say. I'd... This guy doesn't really match you, does he? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no, things are going pretty good. Uh, the game's going pretty smoothly. Uh, nothing much has happened in 24 minutes, though. I've just kind of been working my way up north, but... Uh, we're at that point where... Uh, I'm about to experience the next area of the game. So, here on a Monday, this guy says, We hold contests regularly in the park. You should give it a shot. Doesn't exactly say what... <laughs> Those contests are when when is the next bug catching contest going to be? Uh so this is a uh newer to Pokemon decide to go through every gen on Pokemon Red Gen 1 right now, then gonna do yellow next one. Uh I mean 
I, I'll definitely say you've got a lot of patience if you're going to be playing yellow as well, because yellow is legitimately, like, 97% the same game. The difference is that you start off the game with Pikachu. You're forced to do Pikachu. Uh, your rival has Eevee. Um, some of the Pokemon have some extra moves that they learn, which is always useful. Like, Nidoran Male learns uh, Double Kick, like, way sooner. He learns in level, like, 40-something in red and blue, and then he learns in, like, level 12 in yellow. For, for the reason that then you can use Nidoran Male against the first gym. Um, I think they tweaked some of the, um, trainer levels as well to be a bit more fair, and also they introduced some, uh, Team Rockets that are kind of, uh, like the Jesse James kind of Team Rocket. Um, I get the other guy's Pokédex sticker if I win. Ooh. Uh, I'd definitely say, uh, you're in for a treat, though, because Pokemon is definitely a, like, I mean, the first gen has its charms, and it's, like, it, it's such a good formula that it works well. Uh, I personally do think that this game, like, Gold Silver, just absolutely, um, you know, jumps, j jumps, like, leaps forward in, in terms of, like, the kinds of features available, and also just a bit on the presentation as well. Um, but you know, I'd say every Pokemon game is an adventure on its own, and, uh, just go along with it. It's, it's a good ride, you'll experience, you know, you'll have some fun things on your, you know, some fun Pokemon on your team, you'll learn some new stuff, you'll have some different strats. It's a great game. Great franchise. Uh, so yeah, so I mentioned that there's a bug catching contest in this park, um, uh, beat the third gym on red, and that's how far I am. Aw, oh, dude, okay. Third gym is legit, like, the painful one. Because you gotta figure out that, like, you know, that bin puzzle. It's one of, like, very few puzzles in the first game. And it's... It just gets... It gets me. I, I've got no idea. I just trial and error until it eventually works. Um... But no, yeah. You're not gonna experience anything too... Rough like that. Yeah... I think it also feels random, because the first two gyms don't do anything like that. They were pretty, like, straight paths of the gym leader with some trainers on the way. One shot each Pokemon that gym with Raticate and Dig. Ooh, Raticate is amazingly good in first gen, so you've got a- you've got a great party member on your hands. I think the other gyms that have puzzles, uh... None of them are that one. None of them are like that. Hello, why are you staring at me? Oh, a battle? Uh, okay. This is actually, I, I like this park as, uh, kind of shaped like a Pokeball, but I find it's very cursed, because it's got this, like, different grass texture on the top half. And, and it's like, oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's a grass texture that you never see anywhere else for some reason. Ah, uh, he's got the superior attack, or does he, because it's weak against two types. That was even a crit, and it was worthless. But leech life is still so slow. Uh... So yeah, uh... But no, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just continuing on, uh... I'm gonna be, hopefully, trying to reach the next gym. This will be the fourth gym in the game, coming up. Um... It's still a bit away. Uh, I wouldn't say I'd be there. Uh... At least. We'll give it a half an hour, we'll see how we go. Because there's still, there's still two more routes. Well, a round and a half to go. And, uh, yeah. So, let me talk about this, uh, bug catching contest. So, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'm not too sure if it's limited on time. Uh, have you done most or all the gens of Pokemon then? Uh, I've done Pokemon gens since they've been coming out, since, like, the first one I played was Blue back in 98. And, uh... Yeah, no, I, I feel very old, um, but, uh, and I, uh, I've kept up pretty well. Oh, yeah, it's, dang it, I don't know why I switched now. I am like, oh, come on. Ah, uh, Chicky gets more experience. Good old Chicky. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. I, I do really like Pokemon. I'm a bit more critical of, um, like, you know, Sword and Shield. I think that one's a bit... I also think that's a certain, uh, identity crisis that's got going on in the black and white period, but, uh, they are not, like, none of them are bad games, and if anything, like, Pokemon is rather short 
compared to some other JRPG franchises. Like, a, a Pokemon game does not go on for too long. Um, like, I, I, this, this game's a perfect example. It's like, okay, I fought three... I've got three badges, I've done three streams so far, and all my streams I've done less than two hours each. So, I think I'm like just about the six hour mark in this game. Uh, you can legitimately start to finish this game in like, I'm gonna actually say like 16, 17, 18 hours. Uh, and that's not saying that like, oh you're pushing, maybe you'll take a bit longer, but... Usually like the average JRPG length is like... Well, it depends how old it is I guess, but... Uh, I'd say the most, like, standard length is, like, 30 hours. Um, some Final Fantasies are long. I have not played any of the long ones yet. Um, I've been a big Dragon Quest guy, so I've played all the Dragon Quests minus, uh, 10. Because Japanese only MMO. I'm gonna, you know, I'll be patient. I'll, I'll wait until I've got a fun English translation. Because I just can't with the Japanese for the moment. Um, but all of those, it's like, yeah, they, they start at 20 hours. They go around 30, 40 Except for Dragon Quest 7, which took me 80 hours, <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, why did they do this to me? I think this guy actually trades. Oh no, he prints. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's another mechanic of this game. Just you can print Pokemon sprites and uh, and mail using the Game Boy printer, a, a an extra piece of hardware that prints on like receipt paper. Uh, if you've got one, it's amazingly cool. Just, it's neat. It's there. If you don't have one, uh, you'll never experience this feature. But then again, I never had- I never had a link cable, so I never actually got to experience first-gen Pokemon with- with any friends. It was just kind of like, here's a game. I love how you got this, like, just, just nowhere forest bit as well. And this is where, um, you get, uh, Dig. I think that's TM28. Yeah, it's always TM28. Don't ever move it. Anyways, bug catching contest. Uh, it's on every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. What you do is that you get given, I think, 15 minutes uh, and a certain number of balls, and your goal is to catch the best bug. The encounters in this uh, in this place actually change. Uh, so normally it's uh, either Caterpie or Metapod, Pidgey, Sunken, Hootoot, or and then or Weedle, Kakuna if you're playing Silver. Um, like nothing too fancy. Uh, but if you're in the bug catching contest, suddenly the encounters become, and I'm going to read this out, 20% chance of Caterpie, 10% chance Metapod, 5% chance of Butterfree, as well as also 20% chance Weedle, 10% Cocoon, 5% Beedrill. Uh, thanks for the follow, man. Um, so if you're playing Gold Silver, you can get the other kind of Pokemon as well. You've also got a 10% chance of Paris, 10% Venonat, 5% Scyther, 5% Pinsir. Oh, that's, that's cool. Uh, did I fight this guy? I've been... not keeping track. I lost the battle, but my Pokemon and the prize were being the most lovely. Oh. Hoot hoot. Uh... So, yeah, you can catch these Pokemon. Of course, it's a contest. So, what's the points? Uh... You get points for... Uh... As, as Bulbapedia says, four times the max HP of the Pokemon, the sum of all their other stats, and then up to 29 points based on their IVs, uh, an eighth of their current HP rounded down, and then one point if they're holding an item. Now, the, the current health and the one point for the item, uh, pretty irrelevant. The sum of the stats, four times the HP, and the 29 of, well, the 29 IVs is actually pretty random. But, like, the sum of the other stats and four times their HP, that just favors the heck out of, uh, out of, um, the, the rare two, I, out of Pinsir and Scyther. And, uh, some people might be able to catch Pinsir and Scyther, but, uh, they can't, they, they just get a random score. That's it. So, literally, if you want to, just catch, catch one of those. What's your rewards? Well, if you come in last place, you get a berry. It's not really, not really worth it, but sure. Third place, you'll get a gold berry, uh, which sounds really fancy. That's um, a 30 HP. That's that's effectively what became the citrus berry uh, from third gen onwards. Uh, you come in second place, you get never sown, which is kind of neat. You give it to a Pokemon, and then uh, they will never like ask you to evolve. They'll always stay in their form. It's cool. 
And then uh, if you get first place, you get a Sunstone. Which is a uh, rather good item because it lets you evolve Pokemon like uh, Oddish here evolves into Gloom at level 20. He then evolves into one of two different Pokemon in this game, depending on whether you use a Leaf Stone or a Sunstone. So if you use a Sunstone, well there you go, you got, you got an evolution right there. Um, now unfortunately, because I am streaming exclusively at 8.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, on Mondays, I'm not going to be encountering uh, this at all, which is going to be a bit disappointing. Uh, I also was not paying attention to what he's got, so I'm going to hope it's the Voltorb and I'm just going to switch to Chicky instead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, that's the bug catching contest. You can only try it once a day, but because it's three times a week, it's not too bad. And also, this is a rather, like, convenient spot on the map, even if you don't have Fly yet. You'll get Fly kind of soon, but for the moment, uh, you'll, you'll soon see how actually kind of convenient it is to, to, to get here. Uh... Yeah, I think I tangented myself on the, the topic of copyright, um, but yeah, long story short, the uh, counter notification time expired, uh, for example, there are 50 kinds of TM, traded Pokemon level up faster, wow, you're pretty tough, oh, can I get your phone number? Oh. Um, so yeah, so both Earthbound streams are up, oh, actually, what was really weird was that the first Earthbound stream, it did get a content claim, I had, uh, rejected the claim, uh, and, uh, then I, apparently Sony then increased their, uh, I don't know, their, their stake of the video or something like that, so they, also, I'm at this point in the game, I'm at this point of the game where suddenly I have too many phone numbers. Yes, that's right, your phone can only hold 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, and one of them's your mum, one of them's Professor Elm, and one of them's Bill. That's one thing I hate about this game. I think Heart Gold is, just lets you go. So, now we're in this point where, yeah. Do I get rid of Youngster Joey? Maybe. Uh, but that person does ask you for a rematch. I don't think they're... Maybe they are. I'm not really too fussed about fighting specific people. And you can always, you know, go up to a person and fight them later anyways. Or, like, get their phone number later, so... You're not going to be caught out if you don't have their, um their phone number, but it's definitely, uh, something to follow along if you don't have, uh, or if you want to be able to fight specific people, and I'm not too sure if there's some Pokemon that only ever appeared naturally as a trainer Pokemon, maybe. Uh, you can also start the bug catching contest from this guy, I think. Um, it's kind of interesting starting it from there. And, uh, yeah, now the route continues over here. Actually, no, this is, sorry, this is back, this is a different route. We're in route 36 now. Uh, so therefore, uh, I'm just gonna double check. And... I kinda want Noam Boy to, like, get in there, so we'll get him in there. I'm going to read your thoughts. Uh, but, no, yeah, so the first stream, yeah, the, the copyright claim was, like, I don't know, Sony, then after I counter-claimed, they decided to restrict the video in all regions except Japan. Uh, which is weird, because you think me leaving the video alone and then me filing a counter-claim, you think there'd be no difference in the content of the video. If, if you were gonna ban it in, in other regions, why are you doing it, like, first up? So, I don't know. Um, but, uh, my reference point was, uh, Chaka Conroy, who had various ones of his Earthbound Let's Play, uh, taken down, and, uh, yeah, at some point, uh, well, one of, one of my claims disappeared. I didn't really do anything, it was in the middle of me, like, trying to, uh, fight against this other one, but I didn't really do anything, it just disappeared, so, sure. Uh, Chaka Conroy's, uh, claims his stuff went away a bit ago. Uh, and then one of them came back before streaming. I don't know if it's back. Let me double check, actually. There we go. Uh, hate Flash, by the way. I'm actually switching out after this, um... <laughs> this, this freaking Pokemon. This is pain, not being able to hit. 
Uh, looking at his videos, no, he's still missing, uh, episode 5. It's still not there. It's such a shame that it's, it's not there. Um, so obviously, whatever I went through, it's not 100% done, and I'm really hoping that Sony doesn't come back on either of my videos. Um, so for the time being, I'm just not gonna continue playing Earthbound. Dis it is disappointing, but it's also like, well, what do you do? Like, I'd rather not have videos, like, that I stream to Twitch, and then suddenly I don't get to release them for three and a half weeks. It's just, it's just not fun, so... I'm just gonna stick to Pokemon for the moment, because that seems to be a safe bet for releasing content. Um, and who, whose loss is it? Well, it's your loss as a viewer, because you don't get to see me play this game. Like, I can play in the comfort of my own home, no sweat. It's when I start telling you guys about what I'm playing, that apparently I can't do it. You know? It, it, like, I guess there's a certain degree of, like, you know, you're technically broadcasting it, um, and... Like, you know, okay, you can invite someone to your house to watch you play a video game. What if you invite 10 people to your house? What if you invite 100 people to your house? Confusion, by the way, is gonna kill me. There it is. Oh, hate confusion. I know, it's like, you know, what, what do you expect? I'm poison type, he's psychic type, he's gonna use the obvious attack, but still. Kinesis is also another mean one. Like, just please, I just wanna hit ya. But, he's got no special defense. Or, I have too much special attack. One of the two. Uh, by the way, Galactic, um, enjoy Pokemon Red's, uh, or enjoy first gen Pokemon's, uh, treatment of, um, the special stat, because it's a bit, it's a bit bizarre, where, um, the first gen, um, oh, I, I'm getting another call. Good evening, it's me, Jack. I'm in Wonder Battle. It's not gonna be a repeat of last time. I'll be around National Park. I just fought him! I just fought him! Bro! What? Okay. Sure. Jeez. What? Okay. Uh, there's another guy over here that I would like to fight. Thanks to my studies, I'm ready for any Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, first, first gen Pokemon, um, it only had five stats. It only had HP, attack, defense, speed, special. And special was a combination attack, defense with, um, with all special attacks. Uh, but they balanced all the Pokemon stats, like, around just their totals. So that meant any Pokemon that typically, like, you know, had a high special, not only was good at defending special, but also at dealing with special. And, uh, the, half the types in the game were special, so it's not like it's, like, oh, maybe it's a bit more niche. Uh, no, you can use it in, in, you can, you can use it in all your attacks, and you only have to, like, you get hit with half of it, so. It's a bit broken, so what they did for second gen is that they split up, uh, special into special attack and special defense. Base stats were kind of reorganized again, just around that a little bit, so some Pokemon, uh, have some higher or lower totals. Um, and, uh, generally Pokemon's been in a good spot since they did that, so good on them. Uh, until fourth gen, uh, decided to make it that the, the, you know, whether your attack was physical or special was not based on the type of the attack, but instead the very specific attack just decides whether it's going to be physical or special, uh, which leads into some crazy, um, I guess, like, combat scenarios where, like, yeah, your Pokemon may be water type, but he's a physical water attacker and so, so you can't just throw a grass type against him, you gotta throw a bulky grass type, like Tangler in this example. Tangler is definitely very bulky. Schoolboy Allen was defeated. I believe you can uh, challenge this guy again. So, now we're up to this fun part. Okay, this is where you actually should say, if you're playing this game and, you, you know, you care about completely completing the Pokédex, please save, because you're gonna miss out on this one. So you talk, this is a weird looking tree. Use a squirt bottle. This is what's preventing you from continuing on. This little thing. The weird tree doesn't like the squirt bottle. The weird tree attacked. And he comes at you. Uh, so, introduce... 
Sudowoodo! Everyone's favorite rock-only Pokemon. Uh, rock-only means, yes, use Thundershock. I, every, uh, rock-type Pokemon in first gen was also ground-type. Um, actually, were they? I think so. Um, so, people kind of mistake that rock-types can't have electric use against them. It's got Flail, which is really mean. Because it's going to deal the difference of his health, like, back at me. And I'm just going to be tanking it. Um... I'm at that point where maybe I can try and go for a catch. He's also level 20. So if you really wanted to, chuck him in your party if you can catch him. Um, but he is exclusive here. I don't believe he ever shows up again, so you better get him. Oh, it's close. Oh, well, just keep trying. That's one thing I really like about second gen, or I guess first gen did it as well with the, the, um, the Snorlax. Is that, you know... <laughs> these rarer encounters that you get along the way. But like, second gen really like went to town on them. It was just like, yeah, like let's let's chuck more and more of these rare Pokemon. It's not just, you know, not just something in the way. It's like, well, it is just something in the way right now. There you go, not too bad. Sudo Wudo, although it always pretends to be a tree, its uh, composition appears to be closer to a rock than a plant. And that's, that's the fun part of them, so. I love his sprite as well, it's just like... Uh, oh, what do I call him? What do I call him? Uh... uh... What do I call him? Uh... I am trash with names right now. We'll call him, uh... Uh... Don't know. This is, this is tough, man. What do you name a Sudowoodo? I usually used to name him, like, either Woody, uh, or, like, you know, so something silly like that. I kind of want to be, like, fancy with the name, uh... Like a, like a good pun. I don't know, something like Entry. Because he's a tree and he prevents you from entering. The name red is back in Goldenrod if I really hate it. I don't know. Uh, talk to this guy and he's like, Whoa! You cleared that tree? Have this! And you're like, what the heck's that? And he's like, oh, that's that's Rock Smash. You can shatter rocks with a single well aimed smash. Nothing Rock Smash actually does anything outside of battle in this game, so it's, it'll get there. But yeah, it's in some later Pokemon games they turn it into something. You may also recognize this place as uh, Violet City. That's right. If you look back at your your map, yeah, we've done the loop. We're back here, and that's why I'm like, oh, dude, the um, you know, the the park is in such a great spot, because it's in this bizarrely central location. Um, so yeah, we can go back to Violet City, we can, you know, chill out over here, uh, but more importantly, that was a three-way intersection, and it goes up north, uh, and that's where you've got to continue on, but, you know, it's a rather smooth way of just letting you go back to, um, to Violet City here, so good on him for having that as a, as an option. Uh, Route 36 is, uh, also home to some other encounters, um, that you, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, you can technically go on a Route 36, like, away, like, right away from here, but you can't, um, you know, there's no grass on the side that you could access before Pseudo Wudo. Uh, once you do, oh, do I actually, did I teach Cut to, to the Oddish? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I've got Sweet Scent as well now. Jeez. Okay. Uh, this is a fun little cut here, as well. Ah, you see what I did there. So it's actually a tr like, a trainer up here, but also this cut tree goes around the park. So this actually leads back into the previous route. Um, at the cost of this bug catcher here, who's got everyone's favorite Pokemon, Venonat. That's okay, because I got Fluffer. Why am I using Fluffer? I really should be using, um, No One Boy on this one. 
No, I should be using Babat, because Babat's three levels away. <laughs> Lurk's coming at me with supersonic speed. Uh, yeah, not copyright's gonna do its copyright thing. We'll see where it goes. Uh, I got nothing on that one. Uh, the only other thing I can say in in the oh, I got I got two other topics. I'm gonna hit myself. I'm gonna kill Babat. Okay, maybe not. Ooh, this is not going anywhere. Uh, so I guess first, well, to on to gaming finally. Uh, the, the topic of the week is the Steam... Oh wait, I've got actual Confuse Ray now. Confuse Ray is so much better than Supersonic. It's got much less PP, but it hits pretty much all the time. So no longer do I have to worry about Supersonic missing. Just Confuse Ray. Just, there you go. There's a move that works. So, Babette's starting to get to that point where I can start, you know, using him in some legitimate strat. Even if I can't use Bite right now and I'm relying so heavily on... Confusion damage, but sure. Uh, but yeah, no. The big, I guess, gaming topic of the week is uh, the Steam Deck. It's a console, actually a console, uh, developed by Steam and not um, uh, or, or Valve, um, and not just like oh, it's the Steam machine. It's not simply a licensed PC. It's Actually, yeah, something that has its own fancier OS and has, uh, I guess, the ability to, well, it's, it's a handheld of some variety. So it's kind of like the Switch. It doesn't have the separable uh, Joy-Cons that are still implanted on the, the device. Uh, the screen's about the same size, so the device is a bit wider and a bit uh, thicker and taller. Um, a bit heavier because of that, but... That's okay. Uh, let's see if this Pidgey can be slammed. Slam in! Ooh, that's some good stuff. Uh, but no, yeah, the, the, the thing looks pretty good. Uh, I look at the specs and I go, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing, like, groundbreaking. When people are going like, oh, it's gonna wipe away the Switch, you have to know that it's $100 more at the base price uh, than the Switch, and that's also, like, assuming that the Switch isn't on, like, some kind of discount, which it might be. This might be as well, but at least for the time being, um, I see the Switch being substantially cheaper for a bit, so it's still gonna have a market there. Uh, also, I think a lot of people buy a Switch to play uh, a Switch exclusive title, and so whereas this product, the Steam Deck, has to really fight for it because everyone buying it knows there's no exclusives. You buy this and you will play your, you know, your PC Steam library, like, to the point, to the same, you know, it's the same library. Uh, it definitely serves the purpose of, you know, it's a console, well, yeah, it, it probably one of the best things that you can play in, as a Switch style form factor. Um, and it'll play all your PC games, and I think it'll do an alright job of it. I don't think it's going to be absolutely groundbreaking. I think people are, well, some people are expecting too much out of it. Um, like, the, the performance on the thing, I don't know how to really, like, rate the performance based on the specs. Because uh, it's, it's a Zen 2 CPU, so it's probably going to be like the 3300X, but a little bit less powerful. Which is fine, the 3300X is, like, more than enough. Um... And then I mail you. That's cool. Uh, but uh, the uh, graphics cores in it. it. The game stopped me for a moment, by the way. I've been our bicycle sales have gone through the roof. We owe it all to your advertising by riding around on our bicycle. That's a way of saying thanks. Please give that bicycle. <laughs> Good on him. I love how like you're not just eternally renting this as well. Good on him. Um, maybe I should do that fight and just keep going north. Yeah, okay, I'll do that fight. Uh... But no, yeah, the, the Steam Deck really, like... Th this is the biggest, like, fight of it, is that... You have to either market the people who don't particularly have an amazing PC. Um... 
and, and like, oh, this is, you know, a, a great, like, way of, um... Oh, I forgot to talk about the graphics cards. So, the graphics cards are RDNA2 cores, whereas, like, things like the 5600G, the, the APU, uh, that's starting to come out in DIY markets, but it's um, pre-built, uh, that's only got Vega cores, and, uh, I don't know, it's different architecture, but it's older architecture as well. So, I think these RDNA2 cores are gonna do, uh, barely better. No way to really judge, and especially at this power level? I got no idea, man. I got no idea how well these are gonna do. At least you can compare to the 5600G and go, yeah, like, it'll be a little bit behind in CPU performance, it'll be a bit above in GPU performance. That's probably where I'll sit. Um, and it's a handheld, so you get you get the advantage of that. But yeah, no, the, the biggest thing, I think, is that you have to be someone who really, like, has a use case for playing a PC game off a PC, and not just like, oh, like, because, because legit, if you want, like, a solid portable performance, you're probably going to find better value in, like, a good gaming laptop, rather than, um, rather than simply the, the Steam Deck, and that's, that's something that's like, that's a bit of a dirty pill to swallow, but, like, legit, laptops are incredibly good at like, I mean, I mean, granted, hardware has gotten really power efficient recently, uh, and power efficiency leads to thermal efficiency, and and uh, never mind, thermal performance is also just better overall. Like, legit, any like laptop targeting like the 3060 or so, they're not going to get that incredibly hot. They can run to their like hardware's reasonable limit like pretty well, pretty balanced, um, and. That's like, yeah, a 3060 is tremendously, like, good for what it is. The prices that laptops seem to have with them, I'd say they're pretty alright. That's why I really want AMD to start... Oh, they did put out some lower tier laptops, haven't they? I need to read up on those. I need to definitely read up on those. Um, uh, but legit, like, I've, I've got a, a laptop with a 2060 in it, and honestly, it's like, wow, this thing, like... I was playing freaking F1 20... one of them, 2018, I think. 1080p, 120Hz on the screen, max the settings, does the job. That's a 2060, like, doing the job on a game that came out the same year as the 2060. Uh, now granted, it's F1, it's, like, reasonably well-optimized of a game. Uh, like, driving games just have that advantage. Like, that's fine. But I think that's definitely one thing where, yeah, these... Uh, these machines are, like... Yeah, the form factor is so much better. Um, but... Yeah, like... You're gonna have to play it like it's a console. If you play it... If you, if you treat this thing like it's a PC, it's not gonna win. It's not gonna really be well. Um, treat it like a console... Might be alright, but you gotta find the use cases of a console compared to an actual, like, you know, a NUC. Like a, like a cheaper machine. Um, or in some cases, legitimately, a laptop with a lid closed. Plug in, plug in DisplayPort through that, through that plug. And just, just go with it. Um. Cause yeah, that's, that's a use case that can exist and people shouldn't sleep on it. It's, it's definitely... Definitely doing okay. Um, the other, yeah, the other competition is uh, it's competing with the next gen or the current gen consoles. The next gen because no one can get them. It's crazy that I still like I have not been able to find a PS5 or an Xbox Series X for sale. The Series S for sale in a lot of places. Also, it's 500 Australian dollars. It is remarkably cheap. The Series S is legit. Like I currently. You know, maybe we'll see when this comes out, but it's currently, like, THE console to get right now. It just seems like, oh, okay, so not only can you play every Xbox One title, so there you go, at least you've got that as an entry-level person. Uh, you can at least still be playing all the, the series stuff when they start going exclusive. Um, that seems to be the, the basis right now, that it doesn't seem like anything will not be able to run on it. Because the architecture's the same. Well, the architecture's the same anyways, but... Uh, and also, if you really wanted to, you can turn it into a, an emulation machine. Which is actually something I think the Steam Deck has, like, really going for it, is that... This would be a remarkably good thing to, 
uh, you know, put Retroarch on. So I'm looking forward to actually, like, people using it for that. Um, but yeah, no, so just, just back to pricing, the, at least based on US prices, because, again, no Australian prices, the, the base model has a 64GB um, EMMC uh, drive on it. It's not, like, it's not a particularly fast drive, but it's okay, it does the job, I guess. Um, Pokemon can't do a thing if they're asleep. I'll show you how scary that is. Um, but the the model above has a 256 gig NVMe drive. That's great. That's that's gonna be great for longevity. Also, I guess all the models at the same uh, LD uh, uh, LP DDR5 RAM, which I'm like, oh dang, we're at yeah, I forgot we're at DDR5 already. So that's actually gonna be quite nice for for the long term usage of this. How are you disabling what I have not yet used? That's just not very kind. Don't appreciate it. Really not kind. Wow. Uh, but yeah, no, the 256 gig model um, from... Oh, you jerk. You jerk. I'm not getting out of this one, bro. I'm not getting out of this one. This is Chuck Chicky and just call it. Um... He's going for that Dream Eat, I tell ya. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the 256 gig model, based on the US prices, it's actually going to cost more than an Xbox Series X. Uh, by a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. And that's going to be an interesting value proposition, because like here, on the one hand, we have, you know, the Xbox Series X, the PS5, these consoles that are aiming for 4K, uh, in fact, they're definitely aiming for 4K. They're also aiming for a lower resolution at 120 hertz. They're aiming at, um, you know, supporting these, like, rather wide libraries of games already. Granted, the Steam Deck's already doing that, but, you know, these next-gen consoles are in this interesting spot where they're not refreshing their catalog like Nintendo did with the Switch. Lucky Nintendo cut in as soon as they did. Jeez, by the way, if they released the Switch, like, more powerful in 2019, but, like, didn't, you know, have any game compatibility, They'd be absolutely screwed. They would legit not be lasting. Um, but yeah, you've got that, and then you got the Steam Deck, which, yeah, you might be benefiting off the fact that people will either already have an existing library or be able to play, you know, a bajillion PC games. Stantler! Yeah, you can get Stantlers here. 30% all time a day. Uh, I can't escape probably because I'm asleep. I don't think you can actually run away while you're asleep. Well, maybe you can. Okay. I should probably switch out, because there's no other trainers on this route, so I'll switch to Fluffer. Uh, so yeah, 30% chance of Stantler, by the way. Uh, it's a 10, 15, and 10% chance of a Growlithe or a Vulpix if you're playing Silver. And I actually do want to get a Growlithe now, because I think Growlithe will actually be cool. Um, there's a 40% chance of Spinarak right now, because it's night time. Uh, actually, the, the encounter rates are just weird. Uh, I think if you're playing Sylvie, you're most likely going to find a Hutu right now because Spinarak is only at night. And he's also only in gold. So. Uh, but yeah, no. Steam Deck, you're probably going to have an existing library, but specs wise, it's not going to be anywhere near as powerful. And it doesn't seem like there's a way. Like, the Switch has a way to, you know, when docking it, it has a higher power target. This doesn't necessarily have that. It might, it probably will, but it doesn't necessarily, like, scream out like it's got that as, um, as a feature. And that's something that, I wonder if that's gonna hurt it, um, for people who want to play kind of docked. Never mind, also you have to buy a dock with it, so... It, it, it's, it's not the cheapest thing. I guess it's already got a controller on it, and a screen. So, but... Yeah, I... It's putting itself in a bit of an interesting price class. I'd like to see how it does, though. I think a lot of what I'm saying is speculative, and honestly, like, this is one of the best culminations of Valve's ideas. I think the Steam Machine is okay, but it also suffered from an identity crisis where it's like, Dang it! <laughs> Dang it. Ah. Oh. That's the one thing I hate about catching a growler. I really want one, 
But oh boy. Oh boy, is it just gonna do that to me. We're gonna keep trying, we're gonna keep fighting. Keep on fighting. Uh, but yeah, no, it'll, it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, I'm I'm glad that Valve keeps trying. Like, I I don't like when these companies start. You know. Like, Valve makes a bajillion dollars, and I don't like the idea of these companies making a bajillion dollars and then not seeing it in any other product. Steam is, like, it's brimming with too much stuff. It's very hard for Steam to go beyond, like, infrastructure costs now. I think all the new features that they chuck in, they're just, they're really trying. They've, they've got, like, nearly everything now. They've got, you know, the, the storefront, they've got, like, a lot of features on, uh, store discovery now that are working out, I think. They're doing pretty alright. The community features are like really top notch. They've got, you know, like forums, they've got live streaming, they've got um, uh, like Discord style chat rooms. They got all this like crazy stuff. I think their support has some quirks, but, you know, what, what the storefront doesn't, I don't think there's really anything to do with Steam. Uh, obviously, they seem to not be making games at Valve very much. Or if they are, then, yeah, I, it doesn't turn out that sound so much faster than I wanted. It doesn't seem like. They're really releasing a lot of products. I don't know what's really to think about it, because obviously, like, not many people work on TF2. Uh, I don't follow Dota, and CSGO seems relatively more than TF2, but not, my, not saying much. I love how it's quicker to just, like, run a bit in the bike to trigger a new encounter than actually be using Sweet Scent uh, as well. Man, I had a chance on Growlithe, and then it just, it didn't work out. And now I'll never be able to find another Growlithe, because it's a Spinarak City. It's a 10% chance, it's not the, um... It's not the lowest, but it's not particularly high. I have a better chance in the middle of the day, at a 15%. Um, but, you know, stream time, we'll go with that. Oh uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the the Steam Deck does. Oh, and also, don't forget, it's running Linux. Like, cool. It's Linux, but also, ooh, how many of your games, like, work on Linux? I think the Proton compatibility layer, like, sounds very promising. I've not used it because I've not, you know, set up Linux uh, to run on my bare metal yet. Usually, I just run it emulated like VM, because uh, when I need Linux, I don't particularly need the hardware. I just, just gotta run Linux. Linux subsystem, sorry, Windows subsystem for Linux, or whatever it's called, um, has definitely been pretty, pretty good for my needs. And honestly, like, they're starting to enable pass-through. Man, it's just Spinarak and Vulpix City. Sorry, not Vulpix. Spinarak and Stantless City. Jeez. There he is! Okay, now he's gonna not growl, not r roar at me. We'll get him, we'll get him with the shock. Not crit. And I'll just go in with it. Because honestly, his catch rate isn't like too, too high or too low. That this is not gonna work. Hey, easy. Okay, real talk, I would love Growlithe on my team. Because Growlithe is amazingly cool. It has a brave and trustworthy nature. It fearlessly stands up to bigger and stronger foes. He's a pup pup. Uh, I used to always call him like Hot Doggo. Wait, didn't I do a... Did I do a Growlithe in my, uh, Pokemon Blue? I can't even remember, bro. No, no, I didn't use Growlithe. Oh, I'm legit checking this. I don't think I did. It 
Just look at my party name. Uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't know why I thought I did. I always like calling them. Uh, the good old. Whoop. The good old hot doggo. Always a good name. Always good. So. Well, I'm glad that didn't take too long. Uh, hey, let's just rush up. Let's just go for it. So, uh, yeah, the, the route ends here, by the way. Uh, so welcome to Ekrutik City. Also coming here and this guy's all like, ooh. Hi, I'm Bill, and who are you? Mm, you know, you've come at the right time. I just finished adjustments on my time capsule. You know that Pokemon can be traded, right? My time capsule was developed to enable trades with the past, but you can't send anything that didn't exist in the past. If you did, the PC in the past would have a breakdown, so you have to remove anything that wasn't around in the past. Put simply, no sending new moves or new Pokemon in the time capsule. Don't you worry, I'm done with the adjustments. Tomorrow, time capsules will be running at all Pokemon centers. I have to hurry on back to Goldenrod and see my folks. Bye bye So, yeah, so this guy introduces a mechanic that has never appeared in any other Pokemon game for probably a fair reason, uh, which is... You can send your Pokemon back to Gen 1 in this game. You can't send any new Pokemon back, and if they know any new moves, they will f definitely forget those moves. Uh, but if those moves did exist in the last game, despite not being able to be taught in the last game, you technically can still trade them back. And that leads to some weirdly interesting scenarios with the first game where you can effectively have Pokemon that aren't supposed to happen in that game. Um... There's probably some glitches or stuff like that, but yeah, there's a reason why no other Pokemon game lets you send Pokemon back a gen. You can, uh, I remember, um, uh, yeah, like, all the third gen games, like, they are all on the Game Boy Advance, that was it. You would then migrate them up, uh, to fourth gen through the Power Park, you'd then migrate them over the fifth gen. Uh, and then, yeah, sixth and seventh were the same, you'd continue migrating them over, um, and then 8th gen had the Pokemon Home stuff, and you can't even send all your Pokemon to that game, so who, who knows at that point. Uh, I love how I didn't actually put Growlithe on my team as well. I really should do that. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is Ecrutique City. Uh, this is a place. Uh, it's a little spooky, I guess, but not too spooky. But it does have a ghost-type gym, so... Uh, so let's get rid of Kenya. Remove the mail! Oh, wait. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Let's deliver this. Let's deliver this guy. So, I know exactly where this guy wants him, and fortunately we can get there in, like, no time, so... That's okay. Well... Almost no time. <laughs> Stand <laughs> Other than that, in the world of uh, the Bando, I have been playing uh, a handful of games right now. So I've gotten a uh, very brief talk of F1. I've gotten into F1 2019. Uh, it's a game, it's, it's F1 as it always is. Um, I think I played it like very briefly before, but I actually put it down for a while and started playing Forza and some other games. Um, it's this guy. Huh, what's that? You have mail for me? Yeah, 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 give him Kenya. He's like, bro, dark cave leads to another road. That's good to know. Thanks for bringing this to me. My friend's a good guy. And you're a swell guy too. I'd like to do something good in return too. I know, I want you to have this. So you do that. And you get this TM50, which is everyone's favorite TM, Nightmare. Uh, so, you gotta put your opponent to sleep. Wow, Joey. He doesn't even, he doesn't even want to freaking, like, fight me. He's just, he just keeps telling me to go for it. But no, yep, that was it. Just wanted to do that, and uh, he takes the sparrow away, so I don't even get to keep it. Not that you'd particularly want to have a level 10 sparrow. You can get you can get sparrow later anyway, or earlier even. 
You don't have to wait for that, so... Uh, but yeah, no, so games I'm playing, I'm playing, uh... F1 2019, it's good, I like it. Uh, 2021 came out in the past week, so I'll... <laughs> continue rushing for that, but... Who knows, it's published by EA, I don't know if it's gonna appear on a humble choice, we'll see. Uh, other games I've been playing this uh, week, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. Uh, I apologize to anyone who ever watches me play that game, because one, I suck at Yu-Gi-Oh! Apparently, everyone seems to be really good in this game. I used to always just like rock like a kind of high, uh, high attack team until I got like some cards for a decent strategy, and then usually my strategy was like some kind of mild effect kind of strategy, but because this game's got way too many cards, everyone has a strategy now. It's crazy. So my strategy is recreating that Exodia deck, except I replaced the bad cards with Witch of the Black Forest and Sangin. It's 100% a illegal deck. It's using, you know, limited cards three times. I got three Pot of Greed, I got three Graceful Charities. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, no, it 100% gets me through, uh, through everything. I'll tell you that, so that's my fallback. Um, yeah, it takes its time. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight the Kimono Girls uh, for the moment. So if you head over here, Ecritik Dance Theater. So come in here. We got a bit of a jam going on. You have lovely Pokemon. May I see them in battle? And uh, yeah, so in this Ecritik Dance Theater, uh, each one of these trainers has a level 17 EV evolution. And this one's the Flareon. Whoever I have, I've got Flaffer. Fluffer. Flaffy. That's the Pokemon. Uh, I'm gonna send Noam Boy. If he hits level 20, sweet. I don't know if he's gonna hit level 20, but uh, these Pokemon definitely have a lot of experience, so... They're also not the most pushover stat-wise, but... They're level 17, they're not, like, too rough. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, I think your Leg Legacy of the Duelist seems to be actually a pretty alright game. Uh, I was expecting it to be... Um, a little, I guess, like, buggy, but no, it actually seems okay. I've got two gripes with it. One, or three gripes. One, I can't run it in 1440p without it looking like butt. So I'm running it windowed. Uh, that's, that's a me on PC problem. Uh, but it's definitely, it, it's very weird how it scales, um, to 1440p. It just, it, it seems to be, like, nearest neighboring, and it just looks hideous. It's, well, from, like, a 1080p picture. It, it just... I don't know why. Um, number two. Uh, the UI is okay. Uh, it's a little... Actually, no. I'll combine both of these into two. The UI is a bit aggravating in some parts, particularly making a deck, because there's no search. There's filters, but, you know, there's a lot of cards in this game. It starts being really painful having to, like, sort through these cards. And there's no, like, easy way to, like, view the names of cards. Uh, instead, like, your your deck view and your, um, your, like, collection view, it just shows, like, the, the card thumbnails. And that's your only way to, like, view these cards. You gotta, you gotta just be able to look through the thumbnails to know what card you're looking at. Maybe you can, you know, go, oh, these are all alphabetically and I know what I'm looking for. This one, and you can scroll over to that one, but, uh, it definitely, um, it's tough to, to follow. Uh, and then bonus points for the number of times it shows a weird dialogue, because on console, 100% it was showing the OS dialogue. On PC, eh, it just props up with a weird dialogue box that breaks your full screen. It's very bizarre. But, no, the game's okay. Uh, this is not a shiny, it's just the color's a bit odd. The color is rather odd. That's it, almost kind of blue in this game, I don't know why. And I can't hit with Razor Leaf. So, Espeon, by the way, is an absolute, like, beast of a Pokemon. Um, I'd stay the heck away from any Espeons you, you find out outside of this, but... He knows Confusion, so he knows to at least use a Psychic Attack, and that's definitely doing a bit of damage, but... It's not too much. It's definitely a bit of hidden, though. Well, that knocked him down. Cool. Thank you, Chicky. Oh, so close, I almost had you. No, you didn't. Not at all. Complete fabrication. That's impossible. 
Uh, so if I can get Noah off to level 20, I actually think I'll be pretty okay. But I do really want to get um, Zubat up to 22 as well. I don't know if that's going to be able to happen before an uh, important set piece. Zuki! We got Umbreon. Uh, oh, isn't Umbreon like actually like rather bulky? Maybe. Oh, I just want no on boy to gain some levels. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen at that like pace. Jeez, jeez, incredibly slow. Oh, oh, and he used Trivial Pursuit on me. Oh, I'm dead. Oh no. So for reference, if you don't know, Pursuit uh, deals. It's a standard amount of dark damage. If you're switching out, it will attack you while you're switching out. And deal double damage. It, it only gets me when I really like have to be affected by it, but it always happens. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, another game I'm playing. Uh, I am currently playing through Nino Kuni: Wrath of the White Witch, which is a 20. Is it 2013 or 2014? I think it was actually 2013. Maybe it was 2012 actually. Around that late PS3 era. Um, and PS3 exclusive for the longest time, uh, JRPG by Level 5, you may best know them for, uh, co-creating, uh, titles such as Dragon Quest VIII, Dragon Quest XI, Dragon Quest IX, uh, Professor Layden games, um, they do, uh, they did Yokai Watch, they do a lot of great, like, really consistently good JRPGs. I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, you know, something like Fantasy Life is particularly, uh, you know, amazing, but definitely, like, you know, the quality is there. They really know how to create, like, great interfaces, great, like, sets and mechanics that are, like, kind of interesting. Um, lots of good stuff. Anyway, I'm playing this game. I'm really enjoying it right now. It's charming, it's, like, I'm surprised how well the PC version is. Like, usually, you know, Japanese game on PC just is like, oh, like 1080p60, try and run it on it. Ooh, but no, this game not only looks pretty alright, like the shadow resolutions and the texture resolutions seem to be working really nicely in a higher 1440p setting in my case, but also the game is running at 144Hz really consistently. I can tab out and it works fine. I, uh, can, um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty alright. Uh, you, you have to customize the controls through Steam Big Picture, which I think is a very interesting one. Um, like it, you you request to change your your controller settings, and it just shows up Steam Big Picture, like just window to do it. That's a bit uh, interesting, but uh, the game itself, though, yeah, I, I'm liking, I'm really liking the art style. I think it's very heavy-handed on the tutorials. Like the number, of, take a drinking game, play this game, take a shot every time you see the red text for uh, enthusiasm when you're going through like the beginning, um, you know, like city of tutorials it's just oh it's just, i get it i get it people are brimming with enthusiasm this guy needs enthusiasm how many times do you have to do this mechanic before you can trust me to figure this out on my own and it's still doing this just with a different red text wow vaporeon is just bulking it i know vaporeon is like tanky but wow but then again flinching is apparently incredibly broken in this game Oh, that's a bit, that's a bit mean. Come on. Oh well. Uh, but no, yeah, it, it's getting good. I'm at that point where I can actually start uh, capturing my own team. It definitely reminds me a lot of Dragon Quest V uh, in that regard, but... Honestly, like, you know, Dragon Quest V is such a great, like, basis for a game. Uh, in fact, literally, I'm playing, like, the most popular game that was just directly inspired by Dragon Quest V. Also, oh, that's disappointing for Babat. That is so disappointing that Babat does not get to claim the kill here. Oh, well. Well, no one boy can get it instead. The problem with Babat dying is that he needs to have friendship in order to evolve after this, so him just dying all the time makes it harder for 
that evolution to happen. Still, Golbat is good. Golbat does the job. It's just amazing that he's got something beyond there. You're stronger than you look! Alright, there's one more person here. Um, I'm gonna put No One Boy up front just so he gets like some passive experience and maybe he'll actually get an evolution off this, which would be good. You like my dancing? I'm good at Pokemon too. Uh. I'll go Miki, yeah. Uh, but now, yeah, the game is good. I am really enjoying it. Um, uh, I've got a mate who's getting me to play through Phoenix Wright. I'm also enjoying that. I, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, <laughs> Phoenix Wright's definitely an interesting game. Um, the, the writing is really good on it. Uh, if a little bit, like, Oh, okay, like, they, I, I just, I've done the second chapter of the first game, and they kind of like, oh, okay, like, like, they kind of railroaded me into, like, discovering that something was wrong when I actually had, you know, the pieces were there. It could have been, like, an amazingly good puzzle, and instead it actually kind of, like, really told me how to do the puzzle. Which is weird, because I, I, when I started playing, I... Like, I had no idea what I was linking to what when someone went through a testimony. Uh, the very first one, and it was like I had to assert that, um, like, that something wasn't in. Um, it was like, yeah, uh, oh no, no, it, it was the autopsy report it said, like, um, like, they, they had died instantly, and the person said they, uh, like, they wrote this thing with a dying breath or something like that. And it's like, you, you had to recognize that or something like that. And it, and it didn't click in my head that, um, you know, the autopsy report was, you know, described that kind of stuff. Um, so that, that was the only, like, that's the only bit so far that's actually got me. Um, I feel like I've been reasonably on top of it, though, because currently it's like, oh, like, you know, the person, like, says this. And I've been pretty good at, like, spotting that. Uh, so by the way, uh, beat everyone, uh, beat all five of those dancers, talk to this guy, and he goes, have this, and he gives you HMO3, which is Surf. Amazingly good, like, move. Amazingly good. One of the best, if not the best, water type attack in the game. And it's a HM, you can teach it as many times as you want, just go, go in your inventory, just, just go in, just scroll down, Surf, easy, teach it to your water type. You've got a water type, don't you? You have to. You have to now, so. Uh, that's the reason why you come in here. It's a good experience, but you can't refight them, so. You don't get much out of it, I guess. Now, this is a bit of an interesting scenario because it's like this guy's here. I'm gonna fight him, and I'm gonna be absolutely screwed, I realize that. The world's greatest trainer. I did not save for this. Well, I'm just gonna take it. We'll take it. We'll see how I go. Neville. So he's a bit mean because he's around like the, the you know the level 20 mark. Uh, now I've got Babat here. Babat probably has a good bet of beating this Horner because he's got I've got Bite, and that that just wrecks his poison type. Uh, that being said, Curse is not a fun, fun move. Uh, so what it does is that he loses half his health, but then he deals like a quarter of my health every turn. And me being paralyzed means I'm gonna not be able to do anything. Oh, okay, I, pull, I pulled off a bite. That should be good for... Uh, that's, not, that's not a particularly comforting amount of health. And also, that's not a particularly comforting amount of experience. Uh, I don't know why I ran in with Chicky here. Because I was like, well, I can't use... I can't use Tackle. And wow, by the way. Come on. Come on. I 
think the other thing is that Chicky doesn't really have any place in this fight. None of his Pokémon are particularly, like, useful for Chicky. Yeah, that's a bit of an awkward fight for Chicky. Yeah. Well, at least I got no one boy up there to level 20, so that's fine. Uh, so Neville is about to use Zubat. Now, here comes the magic. So I've got Fluffy here, which means this Zubat has no way of winning. Yeah, Fluffer! Get him with your Thunder Shock. Uh, no, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying Phoenix Wright. Uh, hey, it's definitely a fun game to play with someone who knows what you're about to do, just so that they can judge you and also get your reaction, but I guess it's good on your own as well. And in, in fact, like, it's, it's nice because it does... Um, ah. It definitely keeps you on your toes. It's a bit more involved than I'd, I'd say the typical visual novel. Alright, alright, we got him, we're good. Alright, good on you Fluffer, getting up to level 21. Uh, last game I've been playing for the- oh no, two, two last games. Uh, so, I've been playing more Cooks of Delicious 3, we're almost there. I'm in the last area of the game, uh, but with some, uh... Oh, what was he about to say? I didn't- I wasn't paying attention. Is that Cool Lava or Magabite? I'm gonna go with Magnemite, I'm just gonna hope for the best. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Magnemite, for reference, hey, look at that, now I've got a Fire-type on my team. It's, he's got Super Sonic, though. Oh, no, no, sorry. I, my brain's thinking Sonic Boom, which is all, gonna be equally as bad. By the way, this is the third Pokémon on this team. No. No, sorry. Last one has... Confuse Ray and Super Sonic. I, I, I was thinking the, the Horner had it as well, but no. He's got Thunder Shock, which is probably going to be worse than the... Okay, if this gets a crit, this would be amazing. I can dream... Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Bruh! Just first fight, just chuck him, chuck him against the freaking, like, rival? Yeah, yeah, he's all fine. Alright, this is great. This is a great sub because now he's got Quillava. And now, hey, look at that. I've got a water type with Surf. So I don't have to worry about having a weak water type attack. And yeah, this Quillava, like, it looks spooky, but he doesn't have any great moves on it. He's got Leer and Smoke Screen, which are gonna kind of annoy you, but then Ember and Quick Attack. Nothing that's too strong. It's just, he's a level 22, and that's it. He's just gonna win by, like, having stats. And that's it. Well, you know, that went a bit better than I expected. So, I'm happy on that one. I'm happy on that front. Super effective. Good on him. Good on him. I'm glad that we've got a good battle on this one. I realize I've probably got a bit of a background hum because I got my uh, my heater on this whole stream. It's a bit of a cool cool night this one, but hopefully that's not picking up too loud. Uh, what? No arm boy is evolving? Yeah, he's got arms now. Who cares? He's my no arm boy. So I love Quagsire. Look at that happy face, bro. Oh, whatever. You would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. It just leaves. You got this. Eerie music. Oh, that is so good that, like, not only did Hot Doggo, like, pull off, but also, like, no arm boy. Absolutely, like, they did exactly what they wanted to. I'm actually surprised that my team, like, I had something super effective against all of these guys. Because I did not plan for, plan for that. Usually that fight does kind of kick some people's butts. They don't expect it walking into that room and then suddenly, like, here's this, like, jerk just sitting there. Oh, well. I'm happy there. I'm really happy, so... Uh, yeah, no, Cooks are Delicious is going well. Yeah, last area of the game, uh, I'm probably, like, I think I've got, like, 94, like, routes left out of 387. Like, I'm, I'm tending towards the end of the game, but it's still, still hours away. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, I believe there's two trainers around there somewhere. They did put Rock Smash in the way.
Weird. I wasn't expecting to have to use Rock Smash, but I guess I am. Uh, let me just... Bulbapedia, Rock Smash, because this is going to be the important part. Uh, so, Pokemon who can learn Rock Smash in Gen 2 are... Uh, Charmander, Squirtle, uh, Radada, Sandshrew, uh, Nidorina, Nidorino, and I, I'm skipping some evolution lines here. Paris, uh, Diglett, Psyduck, Mankey, Growlithe. <coughs> oh, Growlithe. Okay. Trouble is, Rock Smash is a pretty, like, average attack. It's as good as Pound. Um, was Oddish in that list as well? That'd be cool if Oddish was there. No, Oddish is not there. Like, if I was to use this, I wouldn't necessarily want this on, like, any of my Pokemon, even though most of them can learn it. Uh, like, Beta can't. So I need, I need to throw away that Candle and Rock Smash. So now I'm trying to think, like, who would be a good Rock Smash Pokemon? So I guess you got that, you got Growlithe, Poliwell, Machop, Geodude, Golem. I guess I can get Geodude, can't I? Geodude would be okay. Hold on, is there a Pokemon HM? Like, I don't know, actually. I've, I've not planned this at all. Uh, what else is there? Onyx? Onyx. Oh. Cool. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, I guess the other last thing as well is TM08 Rock Smash. You can get it at Golden Rod Department Store as well. So, if I screw this up, just buy another one. Uh, so let's put away Beta, because I don't need to cut for a bit, and let's let's get Rocky back into the fray and teach him Rock Smash. Yeah, I forgot that you needed Rock Smash. Uh, that's one thing I don't miss about uh, Pokemon: requiring all these extra moves gets a bit annoying. Uh, so teach it to Rocky. There you go. Hey, to the cave, or to the tower again. This is a bit of a interesting, I guess, like, concept they've got going on here, because the uh, Ecruteque city has two towers, and this is the one that caught fire and burned down. Nice. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the place, uh, I'm, you're most likely gonna find, uh, Radada, actually. Five, or Rattata. Uh, it's got Coughing, Zubat, Raticate, nothing really too weird. Uh, if you go down the floor, there's actually a 5% chance to find Magma, uh, which is kind of neat. Yay, there it is, there it is. He's got a Charmeleon. Good thing I got a person with no arms. Uh, so, no arm boy, by the way, is, uh, water ground type, so that means any fun ground type attacks that I end up finding, you know, get that stab. I think a classic strat is to have Surf and Earthquake. Surf and Earth. What a, what a great combo, because they're both, like, amazingly good attacks for their, um, for their, uh, I guess, like, their types. And then on top of that, like, that's just, like, a great mixed combo in this game. That guy is like grey as. It's like all covered in soot. What happened to him? Ah oh, no! Really? I'm carrying too much. I'm carrying like potions. I'm carrying bitter berries and charcoal and these book apricorns. Ah, uh, at least I've reached that point in the game. I reach it with the phone. I reach it with the bag now. What do you do? Oh. Uh, last game, uh, is Star Tropics. I had started playing it last week, but we'll finish that statement after this. Oh. 
Well, did you uh, witness that? That was the three legendary uh, beasts. So that's Raikou, Raikou, sorry, Entei, and Suicune. Uh, electric, fire, and water type Pokemon. They are level 40, and they're now loose. Uh, this game introduced the roaming Pokemon concept, where somewhere in the world, each of these Pokemon are just chilling. They move around. Every time you move into another route, they move into another route. You can't do anything about it. You just gotta hope that you come across them if you're trying to catch them all. Uh, and if you're not trying to catch them all, it doesn't really matter too much. But if you are trying to catch them all, yeah, good luck. Because it's an absolute pain to find them and to follow them. And on top of that, they can run away. Uh, but if you do get them, they're amazingly good. They're incredibly strong Pokemon and they're already level 40. So you don't have to worry about anything. Level 40 is like, you know, that's, that's like league level already. So... I kind of like the idea of them just being around now. Like, you gotta really work to find them, but... That's kind of neat. When you think about it. Uh... I keep forgetting if coughing is physical defense or special defense. I think it's special defense, actually. I shouldn't be dealing that much damage. If it was physical. Uh, but yeah, no, last game. So, last game I played in the week was Star Tropics. I started playing it last week. I played about half of it. I finished it, and oh boy, it was. It did not pull as many jerk moves to me as uh, it did, I guess, getting into it. It's remarkably varied of an NES game, though. It's got a lot of, like, interesting puzzles. Um, it's, it's strange. It's got, like, an overworld, but there's no, like, combat. The overworld just exists to be, like, puzzles and just run, run around and have an idea where you go, and that's it. Um, the in game, uh, combat is really nice. It works okay. I'm The grid-based approach gets a little strict in places, but it's doing okay. Oh, no, you can't use that. It's illegal. It's my move. He kills bad bad over this, I swear. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. There's only two trainers in here, but... Uh, I'm sending him out just for a bit of that experience, but I, he's not gonna be he's not gonna be ready for the gym. Actually, he's not gonna be ready for the gym. But will he be ready in time for the gym leader? That's gonna be an interesting one. Because there are four trainers in the way. He might be okay, actually. I got some fullbacks anyways. Oof. And Babat grew to level 20, so at least he's only two levels away. But I would like, I would like Babat to evolve this part. Still though, I've got 15 minutes. Uh, if I was to uh, be streaming at a reasonable time. How to get burned. I think I needed strength for that hole there, so I'm actually just going to bail. There's probably more items, but... I'll address that at the beginning of the next stream. But, uh, I've got a gym to attempt to fight. So how about let's let's try and do that. Uh, I should be able to reasonably sweep because I've got one move that's super effective against pretty much everyone in this gym. Hey, remember what I said about, like, sleeping at a reasonable time? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna get that, so... That's okay. Uh... Oh yeah, I actually, I really did enjoy Star Tropics. It got a bit crazy dumb at the end. It's got this, um, uh, for reference, ghost type gym. Nothing, nothing too fancy, but you'll, you'll see me kind of wander around this path because it's a bit silly. Uh, we got Ping here. He's got five Gastly's at a level 16 each. Which means I'm going to be spamming Bite and hopefully we get through this really quickly. Don't you dare poise, uh, paralyze me. I hate this. It's really not fun when I get paralyzed like that. And then he uses Spite, which is just another jerk move, and it reduces the PP of my moves. 
worst part is that- Oh, come on. The worst part is that I can't just use the Paralyze Heal because I know every single one of them is gonna do this exact same- I may as well use a Paralyze Heal at this rate, actually. This is gonna take me forever. I love how I can't- I've got mean looks, I can't switch out, but then I can definitely switch out, so... Uh, let's- let's use, uh, Bitter Berry? Parlor's Hill, there we go. Get rid of that. Uh, no, oh yeah, the ending of the game got a bit mean, where, um, it had, uh... You worked your way into the alien base, and there were a couple of dungeons, the first of which being, like, an, a big open maze. And it required you to realize that the one teleporter that exited the location, uh, you could only access by teleporting to another place in the very top right of the place, uh, of the, of the dungeon. Everywhere else, though, everywhere else you go, you'll, you know, you'll, you can wander around, there's a lot of, a lot of places to go, um, but you have to realize that that's the case, and then on top of that, you defeat the boss, you continue on, only to have more dungeon, and yeah, there's stuff like that. There's, there were just a lot of cases where it's like you had to fight two bosses, one halfway in the dungeon, one near the end. Um, so there's that. On top of that, the final dungeon in the game uh, was rather mean, because you go in, you immediately fight a short, a very short boss. Uh, you then have to go through this strange side-scrolling platform a bit, well it's not platform, but it's side-scrolling in nature. Uh, and then you've got this, uh, this, like, uh, reactor thing, and the reactor heals over time, so you've got to be constantly wailing into it. Uh, and in the meanwhile, it's spawning an enemy at you, it's firing some shots, like, in the safe part of the map, and in the dangerous part of the map, it opens up the floor, which drops you down, and you have to go to just where you beat the first boss. After the first boss, but still. They're nice enough to have a respawning power-up there, that will... Always heal you. By the way, uh... I forgot, what's the, the layout here? I think it's actually like, you constantly go like, left and right. So like, you go right for the person and then up where the... You know, where you're gonna be right in front of the next trainer. And you just have to fight all the trainers. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so this person's got two level 20 Haunters, so this is definitely gonna be up a level, but... I might be able to wing it. It's gonna take some more bites, though. The move, the move set hasn't really changed, has it? Uh, and then yeah. So once you do that, by the way, then uh, then you've got a single staircase that leads up, and you've got the final boss. And the final boss will immediately kill you if he jumps on you. If you die at any point in this dungeon. You have to start the entire dungeon again. Continue? Like, run out of lives? You continue at the same point. It's not too bad. I'm out of bites. So I'm gonna hope that this one last bite does a lot of damage, and then I can either leech life, or... I'm gonna hope for the leech life. Or the confuse rate. Even better. Cause I, re I really want... I've had to get a little bit more experience. Just a little bit more. The curse is absolutely, like, killer. Though. Please hit yourself. It never works out, does it? It never works out, does it? Never works out, does it? Ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna put Fluffer in. I realize I've got Growlithe there, I've just been kind of like shunting off Growlithe. I haven't really been using them. Oh, now you- oh, look, look at that, Fluffer, oh, great sweet Fluffer. I should have sent a Growlithe, oh. I forgot where you get the experience share in this game, it's in this game, I just don't know how, like, late it is. I think it is pretty late, actually. Uh, but, no, yeah, Star Tropics, end boss, end dungeon, kind of mean, but you beat the game, uh, and you get a good feeling, and it honestly isn't, like, it's definitely tricky, but it's not, like, it's not punishingly tricky, 
You don't have to play, like, too much of the game whenever you even get a continue. Like, you just have to do a dungeon. I don't know why I decided to use the bike. You just have to do a dungeon again. Um... So that's not too bad. I've spent the spring with my Pokémon, then summer, fall, and winter. Then spring came again. We have lived together for a long time. There's some very, very wise sayings, I guess. Um, everyone has... You know what's really weird as well? This game introduces another ghost type called Misdreavus. And no one in this gym s escapes Ghastly Haunter Gengar. Everyone's been using them the entire time. People have no imagination in this gym. I think there's been a good ghost type gym uh, in a later Pokemon game, but... Now Nightshade is a bit of a mean attack, so I'm not going to appreciate him using that too much, but I might be able to get him in three hits. Or I could just use Spite and just, you know, that's okay. I think this is going to be it. That's going to be good. There you go. Cool. 22. What? Babat is evolving? So this is the part that I've been waiting for for a while now. So now Babat has become Golbat. And yeah, once you get him out of his uh, more wimpier Zubat phase, Golbat's got tremendously good stats. He's fast. He's got a bit more <laughs> attack. Um, he's, I don't think he's as bulky as like he could be. But yeah, I guess like looking at the stats just between all these Pokemon. Um, Oh, let's, let's look at his stuff. So, yeah, he's got 49 speed, which puts him significantly faster than Flaffy. Uh, significantly faster than Quagsire. And Chicky is still 39. Uh, Hot Doggo, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Notice how Hot Doggo already has 26 attack and special attack, despite being, like, one unevolved and two. Like, right, behind. Still, these are, yeah, this is some good stats. Flaffy's definitely got the special attack in, in the team. You know, I look at these stats and I go, they're not too bad. That's actually really, really well-rounded. Um, Quagsire is just slow. That's it. But he's got attack, bro. And then, uh, yeah, Bayleaf is bulky. Bayleaf is the wall of the team. So, anyways, let's uh, forget how the, the, the gym layout is for the moment. Yeah, it's literally just an S. Just, if you know what you're doing, then you're good. I shall win! So yeah, one last trainer, and then we'll fight a gym leader, and we'll see how we go. But I, I don't imagine the gym leader to be too tough, because uh, I have a moderate strat, and uh, at the very least, like, you know, I don't I don't think uh, Fluff is going to struggle just being sent out, and I don't think uh, No Arms is going to struggle being sent out. I think they're both, you know, admirable Pokemon. Doing, doing this stuff. Maybe Fluffer's gonna be a little bit behind in stats, because Fluffer does have another evolution to go, whereas Quagsire is done, and Golbat is generally, like, it's upper, because it was designed in mind with being the end of a two, two series evolution. By the way, know how suddenly just Babat's sweeping everything now? Like, I'm not gonna send him out too much, because, I mean, I'm gonna send him out a ton on this gym. But, like, only this gym, because I wanted to sweep the gym. I just wanted to get this gym done. Oh, that's just... That's just cathartic, just, just like, seeing him suddenly, like, just... ...clean everything. I lost! And then, yeah, uh, almost everyone on the top row is safe, but... ...that's okay. We'll go back for one more heal, and then... ...go for the gym! Good evening. You're out late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't hear this gym being as like bad uh, as as uh, the last one. I think, the, yeah, this gym and the next one. I don't think people have as many issues. I think uh, gym six and eight are probably the the more mean ones. Um, Anyway, let's let's do a curse precursory save. Hi, right. in we go. Good of you to have come. Oh, I. Uh, sorry, what? 
Here in Eku, take Pokemon have been revered. It's said that legendary Pokemon will appear to the truly powerful trainers. I believe that tale, so I have secretly trained here all my life. As a result, I can now see what others cannot. Just a bit more. With a little bit more, I could see the future in which I meet the legendary Pokemon. You're going to help me reach that level. This is a weird gym leader. Also, how deeply ironic that this kid just wanders into this basement only to find these mythical Pokemon. Uh, also, Morty! Anyway, he's got Ghastly, it's got Lick, Spite, Mean Look, Curse, it's the exact same moveset as every other Ghastly that you'll ever come across. And like all Ghastlies. Oh, there's a little bit there, and you know, you know he's gonna do it. Oh, he didn't do it! He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Okay, cool. Uh, now comes the fun part. He's got Haunter. So, it's the evolution of Ghastly. Uh, this one's got Hypnosis, Curse, Mimic, Nightshade. Nightshade's a bit of a mean attack, but that's okay. Uh, Mimic is probably going to be his worst attack if he uses it, but he's not going to be able to use it. And Hypnosis is mean, but he's got at least nothing to hugely capitalize on that, so that's okay. He's got Gengar. Gengar has uh, Hypnosis, Mean Look, Shadow Ball, Dream Eater. Shadow Ball is an absolutely jerk move. Uh, Hypnosis coupled with Dream Eater as a jerk move. Uh, and Gengar is so dang fast, by the way. So yeah, Dream Eater, by the way. Oh, wait, this is Psychic type. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't plan for this. Um, who would be the best person to sweep? Probably the slowest person on the team. Just, just go with a no arm. You hit him with a surf. Hit him with a surf. Well, Golbat tried sweeping. I don't know if they've got the mechanic where if you die in a gym, they don't lose friendship. I don't know if that's in this game. He's gonna keep trying with Hypnosis. Hypnosis isn't gonna hit all the time. Uh, it, it's definitely a lower accuracy move. Um, him missing it three times is a bit weird. I'll chalk it up to Noah as being great luck, though. And that's it. That's his Gengar. Uh, cool. Cool level. Uh, he's got one more Haunter, and this one's a little mean, because this is uh, level 23. So, uh, different moveset as well. It knows Spite, Mean Look, Mimic, and Nightshade. Uh, so, at least no Hypnosis. Um, or Lick, for that matter, but... You know, I can still do Nightshade, and he's level 23, he's got a bit of a punch, but... Yeah, I, I don't find his team to be that bad, because it's like, his Gengar's relying on the Hypnosis Dream Eater, which, yeah, maybe he can pull it off, and honestly, he's really fast, and he probably can always pull it off, but I think the odds of doing that consistently against, like, a full team is not likely. If you've got three Pokemon that can survive it, the odds are you've probably got this. And also, yeah, he's, he's, he's not particularly great. His strat isn't there. But, yeah, it's more of a strat than your typical, you know, first gen. By having the Fog Badge, Pokemon up to level 50 will obey you. Also, Pokemon that knows Surf will be able to use the move anytime. I want you to have this. And, and yeah, obviously he's going to use, you know, TM30, most annoying move they use. Uh, no, actually, it's Shadow Ball. It's actually the, it's the good move. Shadow Ball is an amazingly good move, but he never used it. He never used it his whole fight because he's only got it on on uh, the Gengar, and he decided to just spam hypnosis instead. Well, that was a good a good stream. Uh, I think the outro is going to drag me slightly over two hours, but that's okay. That's pretty well accomplished. Uh, we went up north, went past the 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 park, caught a pseudo wudo, saw the legendary dogs, fought all the the EV evolutions, did a gym, caught a Growlithe. Uh, two evolutions. I'd say that's a solid stream. What about you guys? Think it was solid? I'd say so. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and with that, thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, yeah, if you're on Twitch, just give a follow so you know that I stream all the time at the same time. And if you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe is always good. Uh, I don't know if sub subscriptions or followers really influences any... I guess algorithms, but if it does, then yeah, let's you share it with like-minded people, I guess.
guess. Uh, but yeah, no, I stream every 8.30 p.m. on uh, Mondays, as always. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, stream as well. I actually think it went over pretty smoothly and uh, lots of interesting topics to actually talk about. I, was, I wasn't expecting to, to have something for the two hours, so that's good. Um, but no, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a crazy place, but honestly, you know, there's something regular about having a nice 8.30 p.m. Pokemon Gold session. So, uh, yeah, with that, stay well, stay sane, uh, find some shinies for me, because I still haven't found a shiny yet in this game, and uh, eat your greens. Anyway, have a good one, everyone.